Reynolds. Boom. There you go. There Look at that go. right there. I'm not going to front. That was a smooth transition. And I'm, and then they just, they just keep rocking it. I love it. This is great. All right, folks, here we go. We are in the business and we're starting off on ascent folks the grand finals here for the immortals first light presented by gamestop is about to go underway fun fact used to work at gamestop many years ago got fired we won't talk about it anyway <laughs> surprise they let you on this broadcast and golden boy geez got some bridges you burned <laughs> i don't think they knew they, i went by a different name osvaldo back in the day uh, uh yes that's right you anticipated this moment coming in the future <laughs> I knew it would I, happen eventually. Definitely stoked to see this play out on Ascent, though. We have seen some Ascent so far today, but people are still trying to figure out exactly what their set pieces are for this, what the proper default is. Obviously, mm -hmm. a lot of pressure can be applied through mid, and if you can't crack mid open, you can have some difficulty. But we're going with a standard, actually not so much. Defenders heavily stacked over into the A site, potentially anticipating TSM making this rotation on through as well. Yeah, I've seen A kind of be a, a, a point of interest for a lot of players as they're learning this map. Uh, I don't know what it is about it and, and what works, but let's also, uh, as we dive deeper into this and we have a little bit of time here, let's talk about the compositions that we're seeing because on one side, we have no Brimstone present, uh, but TSM, they are actually going to be running a Wardell on the Sova. Not surprising considering what the Sova brings to the table. Uh, you're going to have Drone consistently on the trusty Phoenix. Uh, Hayes, more than likely, yeah, Hayes is going to be playing the, uh, the the Sage there. And I'm actually, I've just been shocked with the fact that we've been seeing some, like, crazy strategies uh, today, Gabby, with, like, Sageless comms. I, it, it, it genuinely just caught me off guard. But Sub Rosa is going to be able to get first blood on there, and Skylar pushes forward, and it's just TSM marches on through to the B site. But that kill is going to be dropped. Mitch does manage to find the target. Now we're going to find ourselves into a 2v3. Cloud9 need to try and retake this site here. You got to look for that Sova. Give the uh, give your Cypher a little line of sight. Mitch, nice shot right through the structure there. It's going to actually provide Vice maybe an opportunity to go on to this right end here. And I think that that was going to be scouted out. So Vice knows exactly where they're going to be. And here comes the push forward. Is they're going to tackle this attack here. And this is looking very good for TSM. It was a good effort by Mitch and Vice, without a doubt. But it would be TSM in the back room that holds strong. Oh, I caught the tail end of that. Unfortunately, the uh, fight went out of the way of my screen for a moment. But in the end, it looked like as far as the defensive positioning, when you have to collapse from the outside corridors and you already have the remaining members of attack set there in the back site, fully yeah. took advantage of it on the side of TSM to punish Cloud9 infringing upon them. I was going to put TSM up 1-0 there at the beginning. Uh, very well done by them, leaving... Cloud9 with minimal options here as they are broke, will need to save. Ten's only one that actually purchases as far as getting a sheriff. And we know what Ten's is capable of doing with this. Wouldn't be a shocker to see him cap a few players as they try and uh, make a make a push on through here. And Ten's, actually, I, I'm kind of surprised that Ten's is going to be playing the Sage. But I, I do like the change up here uh, from Cloud9. Didn't get to see the Gen G game, so I don't know what their game plan was there specifically. But as all that was going on, Wardell, though, it doesn't matter what kind of gun in his hand. So long as it's a sniper rifle or some kind of gun that contains a scope, he will find his mark. And that will leave only one player left alive. It's going to be Vice, who gets spammed right through the smoke, comes through. Wardell was waiting for him with that Spectre, and that is going to do it. Give you a little transparency. I'm I'm experiencing some of the Minecraft effects that uh, Pins have <laughs> left behind for my position. You know, I guess I haven't been playing it enough, apparently, and it's mad at me for it. But... I am a Minecraft savant, uh, just so you ah, know. I have ah. many diamonds. I have a lot of diamonds, all the diamonds. Well, there you uh, go. I like to keep the diamonds on my fingers instead of on my screen, you know. Fa Ooh. Fair. I don't know. That was a like good flex. I wasn't expecting that flex. Really. You know, I got you, going by. I got you. <laughs> I respect. I respected hustle. You know, respected hustle. All right. Well, let's uh, just jump back in here for round number three, as uh, we're gonna see Sova playing over by the B site there, and just look at those shock arrows. It's kind of been the the story here, right? Players taking advantage of the kit with Sova. 
Skylar gets two kills though, and Mitch actually helps him out. That's gonna leave a bad taste in TSM's mouth. Is the only two players left alive are gonna be Sub Rosa and Drone. Drone though is gonna be firmly on this B site here, and I don't know if they're necessarily gonna be expecting him here. And he actually finds one. Oh, but cannot find the second player there. Now that's just gonna leave Sub Rosa. The bomb down over by B site. So you gotta obtain that spike there. And I don't know if Sub Rosa has many options, but what he does have on his side, which will dwindle very quickly, is time. If Sub Rosa can get this pick on the Vice Gabriella, this can actually really present a winning opportunity here for TSM. And Spice out in the open, Ooh. trying to, oh, there you have it. Defender side taking that one away. First victory over for Cloud9 side. They weren't too worried about getting that loss in round number two due to the economy portion. But here, this does apply a bit of pressure over to the TSM side. Not enough money across all of them for full buy, so they'll have to scatter yeah. and make some purchases for the others. But on the side of Cloud9, we are getting some partial buys out in the meantime. I am going to click this link. Take it away, Golden Boy, while I... <laughs> I need this. While I fix my, my Minecraft. Do your thing. Don't worry about it. I, I will. Life finds a way. Life finds a way. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. So now we're into the action here. And we're going to have Cutler poking around on A side, seeing what he can pull away from this team, what kind of utility he can snag out of this. Shinobi's waiting, anticipating that there could be a potential push here on the A side. A little does he know. Players are actually going to be stacked up on mid. Another smart play there from Mitch. I actually thought you can send a drone through there. Joke's on me. And joke's on Mitch as well, unfortunately. Door is going to be closed. And now as uh, time continues to tick away, Sabrosa inching around here. I think he may have heard tens drop. From that wall. The wall is only going to last 30 seconds now. You're not going to get much uh, value out of that. But that means wall out of play in case they want to try and take a site. And they're they're just waiting right now for a pick. And it could come in the form of Shinobi around this corner. I sure hope Bob isn't looking because his friend might actually meet his demise here. But it's actually going to be Shinobi. Shooting out with that SMG. Does not nail the shot though. Looking to nail him with the aftershock, and he manages to do that one there. And then the challenge comes up top from Hayes. And just like that, you think that it was all going to work out for TSM. And then, just like that, Cloud9 managed to bring this one back 2-2. Two to two. And let's take a look now at this uh, replay. This was Shinobi just dropping that right in front of Drone. Drone, none the wiser, didn't... I don't think... I mean, surely Drone heard the shots behind him, but... Could have been a little further away. Either way, though, that was very well executed. I think I'm coming back in a little bit. I did manage to catch the wonderful aftershock there. I love Breach, so I'm always happy when I see something like that properly executed. But as far as what we are seeing on our screen right now, it's a default split apart for TSM here on the attacking side. Looks galore, a nice hit from Tens here to get that pick off of Catwalk, enough to clear it and run it back over onto A site. What excites me about this matchup is that anything that Wardell can do, Tens can do as well. Uh, it's it's always just been, uh, or at least for this tournament, the snipers have really taken center stage. And you know your oppers are, are typically going to be those 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 playmakers, right? The the, the character actors, if you will, uh, in these types of scenarios. But it's just something awesome to see a person like Tens or what I'll pop off with this. Vice has his back, though. Tens drops away. That's just going to leave one player left alive. It's Drone, the madman with Phoenix. What is he able to do there? I think he is going to be met any moment now by Vice. But checking his corners, clearing the site, and there goes the tag. But look at that shot. Absolute filth. And Vice is just waiting this one out. He gave away his position, but Tens was there with the shorty right to the dome. Ended that round. Alrighty. Are you good now? I think I'm good. I th I'm not going to jinx it, but yeah, no, thank you for... It. 
Thank you for taking that island by yourself. Appreciate everyone bearing with me. I had to get rid of the Minecraft, get some Valorant loaded up here effectively. And... I just like how the Minecraft is a thing now. I don't... Yeah, you know, <laughs> that's the only acceptable way to describe was that it point. Lauren in time. who said that, or was it Pucket? Mm -hmm. I don't know, but either way, it's hilarious. Yeah, something of the sort. But so I'm going to do a little bit of catch up in my brain so far, as far as what we have been witnessing at this point. TSM still on the attack, obviously. And it looks like it's a commitment over onto the B side, pushing forward from the opposition, gets a pop from drone onto the omen. A great way to start cracking that open, but it's a single trade so far. Smoking off over onto Market to make this push more effective as Sabrosa does get that entry effectively. And here it is with the ultimate to go ahead and block off Market as well. Can Shinobi get this with the aggression into B main? But unfortunately, there's a sniper on the other side. Yeah, Wardell has been clinical, like a surgeon with that weapon. It's been working out so well for them. So now you're going to have Color playing in the mid. But Vice is on the CT side. So on defense side, wrapping around to B. Wardell will be watching that lane aggressively with the op. I would be shocked if he drifts away. Instead, he's sending out the drone, though, which is a smart play to do. And he found him. He found the mark. He found the target. He also tagged him, too, forcing Vice to have to rip out that dart that is going to be sitting inside of his chest there. And now Vice is just going to try and poke this one out. Goes for the shot. Actually, does a little bit of damage to Wardell. Not enough, though. And as Cutler came around the corner, he beams him right in the head. It's going to be 14 HP in a dream. He tried to wrap around and hit him with the right click of the classic. But instead, it's Wardell who downs him with his very own classic. That's going to make it 3-3 now. You do have to commend the attempt. He knew where the Owl Drone came from, wanted to go ahead and follow up to get that entry into sight, was able to get the frag over from the B main entryway, but nonetheless, the classic was not enough in that scenario. As far as with the buyout set, we are coming across this point in time. Cloud9 gets their full buy. Op operated directly over for Tens, the man that we love to see it on. Tens and Wardell, as Golden Boy just had mentioned. That's what you're going to be watching off. Op versus off, who is going to pop off the most? And taking a look there, so you got Tens watching mid. And, uh, and Wardell's actually going to be creeping mid as well. He will be working with Sub Rosa there. They're bringing that bomb around, so Spike can play in mid. They've Rather. got some intel. Yeah, this is an interesting uh, rap there, but I like the slow play at mid, Gabby, because that means that, you know, they, they know that there's not going to be a lot of activity over there, Jump but over. that can also Put imply, down. and it's really going to be up to whatever Cutler can do here, that what they can manage to pull away from this. A run it back actually gives him a ton of information, but tens. I, I mean, he was right on top of that wall and, and certainly Drone did not expect it with the way that he just wrapped around that corner. This is going to flatline him there for the time being. Not and you're going to have Shinobi on this big flank, Gabby. Yeah, Shinobi, he was waiting there, but Wardell luckily able to find that upon their entry. It's been a slow push completely through mid for TSM, and the response from Cloud9 to back off did allow them to have some kind of foothold, but in the end, they are starting to trickle down in numbers on the defense. TSM rotating effectively over towards the B site, worried simply about a Silva and a Cypher that's coming all the way oh, from A. So and that's going to take too much time for him to make his way through. So that's going to be an effective push over from the attacker side. That actually was such a great round there. They pulled out so much utility. That wall going out, while it was a, a, a really smart play from Tens, now that wall is, is, is just going to be tucked away on the opposite side. This, this was also another critical shot. And just Wardell coming up clutch again. It's just the flick there was absurd. It was a matter of seconds because as soon as that trap wire went off, the breach turned around, like had eyes on it, but Wardell was right there watching his back. And it's a good thing that there was no uh, friendly fire there because he definitely would have killed his teammate. <laughs> that said, though, uh, oh. Sabrosa and Hayes are going to open up the round and pick themselves up. Two kills here. And Latigris, this is looking pretty solid for TSM so far. Let's see how they're going to be able to maybe look for this executor and they're actually splitting a lot of this attention yep cloud nine responded differently this time more aggressively positioned with their defensive hold unfortunately got punished for that over on the b site 
but have still two standing strong on the A site. This gives the information to TSM that they have some more fluid movement through B, but Relic is still here to keep hold of this and gets the pop out, uses his own elf teleport to redirect himself and potentially get another, but Sabrosa sees it through the dark cover, gets himself onto the site, and this should be another plant over for TSM. Yeah, that was massive there. Just getting that blip so that he knew exactly where he needed to be. But here comes a push now. As Tense is actually going to just try and shoot through this one. And, and a res actually to help out a teammate bring him back into this one. So Omen actually dies instantly. So Relic's not able to stay alive. But Tense is going to get the better of Wardell. That's just going to leave one player left alive. It's Sub Rosa. He's playing low. Can Sub Rosa clutch it? And he does. What a play there from Sub Rosa. The Brimstone holds it down right on the low ground wow Man. it was gonna be over as soon as the sova was taken out and he was all in his lonesome directly onto the site you see the way tens was able to clear completely into the back of site they had the information that the attacker remaining was here but sabrosa a Effectively catching over from the Defender rotation before reverting his eyes to Catwalk. Effective crosshair use for him. And, and also bear in mind that the, the play there on the crouch, right? Because when you crouch down, you don't see where that person's going to be. Unfortunately, the hero of the last round, Sabrosa, dies and gets that first blood. But Hayes is there for the pickup. Actually goes at near sight there. Paranoia. Such a good ability. I, you know, when I was casting Twitch Rivals, Myth was actually doing a brilliant job on those paranoias, lining them up exactly where they need to. And a lot of people don't know how to respond. Everyone always thinks about the Rays, uh, or the Rays, you hear me? I always do that. The Reina, <laughs> uh, two names with R, and it always throws me off. Uh, the Reina uh, paranoia, right? When she throws Leer, but Omen, I mean, it's always been good, and it can catch a lot of people through one straight line. And then before you know it, you sent that thing through a choke, and there's nothing they could do to stop it. Yeah, whether you actually put them into a nearsighted position or just force some displacement. Oh, this. Shinobi attempts to get his shots over this wall. It's an angle where you can barely tap the hairs on the top of the head, but Vice is the one to go get it from the A main entryway. Luckily, Cloud9 will start to rotate directly onto the site, but the post plant positioning has been taken up by the three remaining TSM members who have their eyes on this entryway. There's a Cypher lurking in Maine, but he is not anymore as Hayes takes him out of the equation. Yeah, there's not really much he could do there. You have a uh, Relic Skyler, that bulldog, but not able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe there in the end against that Phantom, thus ending the uh, hopes and dreams of that round. TSM are going to go up 6-3 here. For just joining us, grand finals of the Immortals' first light presented by GameStop been a long road to get up to this point we had a great open bracket qualifier that took place echo 8 and china win came out of that one uh china win actually took i want to say it was gen g to a game three i believe yeah they took gen g to game three so i think you know nothing but upwards potential for that yeah, yeah, roster yeah. includes uh fortnite there they are uh world cup runner-up psalm I've always been a big fan of his, but I've also also been a big fan of this TSM lineup ever since I first started casting them in a few of those Twitch Rivals competitions. And I mean, this team has just been a joy to watch. But now here comes the attack. They're trying to just bait out what they can. But it is going to be Mitch. Lines up the shot there, Gabs against Hayes. And just look at the way that they're preventing them from being able to get any kind of foothold inside of this site. Just playing those angles gorgeously. And this was all led in with the broom smokes dropped down by TSM. While they are great at preventing the rotations from the defenders, they do forecast this a bit. Cloud9 was able to easily respond, very aware of the fact that TSM is stacked here in the B main, but there's no reason to push into the Rosa. The first one to make him way into the cycle, Wardell is following up with the Ob. Then still doesn't need an op for himself to get that damage, though. Those two frags are going to be very effective for Cloud9 in trying to get them corralled here. <laughs> Why he doesn't care? He can hold it onto the same position the entire time and continue to grab. Yeah, but they did lose a lot of value there. Uh, I I think that the play could have potentially have been to uh, place down the brim ult right at the back of defender side, so that this way you can remove it and and, and pull that attention over there. But this is going to be the end of the run there for TSM. Cloud Nine manages to come out on top. 
But yeah, losing sub Rosa early on, one has to wonder what their plan would have been uh, uh, with the orbital strike. Because if they place that backside, pulled a lot of attention and maybe had two players backside, that actually like would go really poorly for Cloud9 there. Uh, in, in keeping track of what Alter are going to be online, it, it's an important part of this game, especially when you have such high impact ults such as the uh, Brimstone ult and as well as Rolling Thunder for the Breach. Uh, those are just so imperative to be able to use as well as you can. Now, Wardell just get, going in for this drone. More information as much as he could possibly muster for his team. Hunter's Fury is going to be in effect for TSM. Wardell looking to see if he can get the tag, but doesn't find anything with that one, Gabby. Not quite. The spike itself is making its way through market, and Relics did anticipate oh. this, was able to get one. Couldn't follow up on it, though. Wardell, I mean, Golden Boy, when it comes to him on this op, it doesn't matter what agent he's on, just a effective completely with his lineup it's it's filthy it really is and i actually look great he landed the paranoia but wardell still was, was a, had a sniper rifle and was able to see uh so <laughs> it just did not pan out well for them there drone with the guardian and we got any guardian users in the chat because this is this this gun slaps it's really really good are you a guardian user golden boy I am not are you an advocate no. <laughs> no, no, no. I will I will use my prime skin vandal with the laser beam sounds because it sounds like Halo and I'll I'll just commit to that. I'm mad because I totally missed the prime skin. Oh wow. Before yeah, no, you missed left. the laser beams. Yep. It was that thing that I said, oh I'm gonna do it. And everyone I play with, they already bought it. But in the end I missed out on my opportunity. Yep. It, well, I just forgot to hit the button. It's just <laughs> always hit the yeah. button, man. Come on. Always. Dog. Always gotta hit the button. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, as far as obviously Cloud9, one member standing, hoping to hold on to the weapon as much as possible, and TSM are just looking to try and pry it from his hands. So that's going to be the end here. Four to seven, TSM pulling ahead in this one. Effective use on the attacker side. When it comes to Ascent in general, it's not yet determined really whether it favors attacker or defense. You have to give it to TSM through the way they've been able to push through the narrow chokes. That's one of the most difficult things to do, especially when you're not opting to make a rotation through mid connector and clear that out. But yeah. Cloud9, on the other hand, they're also electing to keep most of their defenders directly on the sites, using things like trap wires to cover market and bottom of mid instead of positioning actual agents there. Ascent has been a fun uh, map to try and analyze and, and dive further into because I, I'm i still, like, yeah, like you said, I'm, I'm unsure. Like, we, we have, like, a... A good understanding of split changes aside, and they were pretty significant. You know, we, we kind of wrap our heads around this one. Whereas, like, Ascent, it's still a little fresh. I think not, I, I think players are now starting to, to find a groove with it. Back when the game first came out and Ascent was featured, everyone was trying to fight after that mid area. But with how wide open it is, it's almost like just pointless to go for that uh, in the beginning. So we are waiting now for an execute. So that was smart. They dropped the wall down and then didn't actually have anyone on top of it, at least from what I could tell. Rolling Thunder, though, is going to be in play as Hayes is going to be a rock to the side alongside with Sub Rosa. But Cutler, while all that was going on, did manage to place that spike down on the A site. So look at the amount of attention that was wrapped around, forcing all of Cloud9 to now focus on a retake. Meanwhile, TSM, they're going to be making their way around from the attacker side. They got to get there quickly. Oh, that ended up pulling so much attention. And now Cloud9 have made their way to Raptors. But this is a joke that will be anticipated by TSM. They're making sure nobody's coming through the flanks. Trap wires have been set up for that effectively. The Brimstone's going to be coming through Tree Room to oh. offer that effective cross. But here it is directly from A main. Wardell positioned effectively. Gets flashed out, but it doesn't matter. You can sidestep it. And Cloud9 oh. have no one left to try and keep this alive in this round. That was just next. I mean, well, everyone died there, but, uh, you know, I mean, because it's fine, right? You're going into the half. Everyone can die. I, I, even though I'm all like, hey, man, stats. Anyway, moving forward. Uh, that was such a brilliant play. I love that play so much. Everything about it. Pulling the attention aside. Executing on the site. Like, that is 
that right there was just a, a, a great example of how far a lot of these players have taken this game in a very short amount of time. Yeah, and they, again, Cloud9 like, just weren't expecting it. They really so weren't. Good. I mean, the fact that when you end up using the Rolling Thunder, and yes, in an area like B Main, it does cover a lot of it, but the dark cover in that entryway was enough to prevent Cloud9 from really following up, nor was anyone there to do so yet. Instead, they all got drawn attention. Now we're back at pistol rounds. That's going to be the opening frag drone with the aggressive positioning into B main, commonly seen by defenders right at the start of these pistol rounds to try and punish in those close quarters combat situations. And, and drone loves doing that, by the way. He'll take that fight, you know, nine times out of ten, and he'll win that fight nine times out of ten. That That's just how comfortable he is. And every single time I see him on that Phoenix... It is always, I'm, I'm taking notes, you know, I'm taking notes because he, he's just so precise with it. But now, here comes the attack here. They're going to push right through the smoke and look at this. Actually drops him with that shock dart, does a ton of damage, but it was not enough to get the kill. But they're at, down to 35 HP, this Sova. Very weak. Hopefully the Sage. Okay, the Sage is going to have the heal. Yeah, she will. And the two remaining defenders over on TSM side, they're forced to make this slow rotation. Drone starts to peek out, and right there behind Tetris, stage popped up, but everyone else, you have the Sova positioned in A main to send out that drone for intel. It's no secret that TSM is Love still it. on the Raptors. There's oh. another one from Drone, but in the end, it's the 1v1 Golden Boy. Yeah, and also you have that shock arrow. So the slow orb is placed, preventing Mitch from trying to get this angle. And that is going to have to be just Hayes going right for this one. And he had to commit to it. He had no choice but to commit to that defuse. Uh, slow orb was really smart. Also have to give credit where credit is due to drone because he, he dropped the molly right in front of tens, forcing tens to go over to the left of drone. And then that allowed... Uh, uh, Hayes to nail that shot. That said, though, a big w round win for Cloud9, hands down. They needed this one. They went down into this 8-4. Uh, now looking a little bit better. They're going to have some guns to work with this round. They can easily make this into a 6-8 situation for them. Let's see how they're able to do this as kind of getting a little bit of a, a, I don't want to say like a default, but you know, you always, sometimes you see a lot of players like to just put pressure at, at, at mid. I don't think it's necessary, but a lot of players do like doing that. And Shinobi downs Hayes instantly. There finds Ooh. one in front. Just look at that. Relics. That intel. Yeah, very well done. Yep, grabbed over. Sova knew that nobody was coming directly on the flank in mid. Gave Cloud9 just the agency to move directly into this site. Tens, a great pickup to clear out over in this defender spawn area. And now with that, it's just a lonely <laughs> brimstone. A lonely shorty. <laughs> Yeah, lonely shorty, you know. He needs a shorty. Everybody needs a shorty. I think, I think you could shot. throw it. You could throw it from this distance, maybe do like 20 HP. Clonk him in the head, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think that works out. It's just like the way he's holding <laughs> his angle. Crouch down. Maybe right. you throw them off enough where then they end up shooting themselves with their better weapon. And that's ah. the ultimate 200 IQ step. If <laughs> I will find a way to make that one happen. Yeah. I will most certainly find a way. Big round win, by the way, uh, for Cloud9. I mentioned before at the beginning of the round, winning that pistol round, just giving them that moment to get back into this one. Whenever in any kind of tactical shooter, too, when you think about a new map coming to the fray as an option, you'll sometimes have some teams adopt it early to get an edge on the competition, yeah. come up with some strategies for themselves to really edge them out. But then on the opposite end, sometimes everyone is still figuring out what those strats are going to be. So if Cloud9 has some pieces on the attack to try and really dishevel TSM as they're probably going to default to what you see traditionally here, two over towards A site, two on B site, one hovering in the market area to keep the eyes on mid as it is going to be more of an a positioning from the side of cloud nine the paranoia from omen at the beginning of the game prompted everyone to abandon their positioning it didn't quite pull attention but that was good use of utility there to not really allow them to take that aggressive angle now they start to creep back in on the other side of the map you'll have the brim and the cypher working alongside one another Let's see what Sub Rosa and Cutler can whip together. 
There goes the push on mid, which you will see players do. They'll smoke out that mid archway and then creep in, but Wardell was there and read that one like an open book. Tried to see if he can get a kill right through the cyber cage, but it did not come to fruition there. They're just gonna be held back for the moment because of that uh, Molotov and Sub Rosa inside of the dark cover actually gets himself to color finds a headshot. Sub Rosa wasn't able to stay alive there long enough. Shinobi got the better of him there, trades out the gun, but Wardell is gonna take his life. And that is gonna be C9 losing out for the first time in this half here, but uh, certainly was just Wardell rotating around quickly enough and had just all the intel necessary and then sub rosa massive play inside of that dark cover yeah if you look at kind of the way that the defense ended up responding there with drone having his sights over on mid the dark cover was there but not being able to hear any movement through mid he had a feeling they were either going towards a or b with more of the vision being had over on a immediately popping as they made their appearance and TSM instead is responding, directing themselves over to the B site, but there you go, already getting flashed out and just having to keep themselves into B main with a rotation potentially coming from drone on the defense. Yeah, and Relics played the paranoia on that same corner. Obviously, Relics doesn't know that he did tag uh, the, I think he tagged the Sage and the Sova in the last round. But he did get that kill there on to Hayes, so now site's gonna be wide open. But here comes Drone as he's stuck inside of the cyber cage, but does manage to line up the target there against Relics. But Shinobi, seven HP, not a lot of health there. And that's the plan. Rotation, yeah. Exactly. Directly on site. And as far as the rotations from the defense, I mean, you have Phoenix that is stuck kind of there in shed. Mitch, with his aggression, he's just trying to clean up anybody before they can rotate directly onto the site. Tens gets that entry, but is traded out for Cutler. So Drone has a great follow up. It's the 2v2 situation, but post plant has been taken. Oh, nice shots from Mitch. Drone needs to win this one out. Doesn't have a lot of time to do so, but he's going to run away. And then in the back of the side, you're going to have Vice. Just waiting, actually on top of the corner. So that was going to be the running back play. Should know exactly where he is. Mitch gets the kill. That's going to be his third one for that round. Cloud9 managed to bounce back after that one. And this Same has been a great game. Yes, yeah, seven to nine game. on the scoreboard. Four, eight going in from the first half, which isn't a terrible place to be if you're Cloud9. Obviously, they've made up a lot of steam in the meantime. The bank's looking somewhat flush over on for TSM. They're still holding on to those phantoms. Yeah. You got, I think, TS, I think Hayes may have just picked up a sheriff and light armor. Yeah. So the options are going to be very limited here. This is a critical round for TSM. I have to try and hold this one off. And if Hayes is able to get a kill with the sheriff, might actually give him a gun to start to operate with here. Off your feet! There's Rolling there's Thunder. The rolling thunder. Yeah, they're going to, and no one's going to be on site actually. So they're going to go in there for the retaking. Cutler nails a headshot right on top of Vice, thus kind of slowing down this push. You got the spike over by Wine. They're going to be playing over there by A Long. Here's uh, Skyler actually playing right outside of this one. And they're trying to pincer them in, Gabby, but it didn't work out. Now it's going to be open in the backfield. What do they opt to do here? That's the question if they push in. I mean, that orbital strike pretty much locked the remaining attackers here into A main. There's still 45 seconds to go on the clock, so some movement, but... So good. At, at this point, you do have Omen over on the B site to potentially either draw some attention or scout out how many defenders are remaining away from the A site. But Sova, he's still holding strong into rafters. Ready to peek anybody that pops out through those this arches. Was so good. Okay, so they put dark cover on that archway because they wanted to give them the idea that they were going to be rotating out. <clears throat> that said, they did. They made some noise and pulled away some of the attention there. Unfortunately, not Relic enough. Was not able to stay alive and get kills, but it was good because it actually took two players away. Now they just got to worry about Wardell on site here. But Wardell, that's easier said than done. And he gets himself three kills out of that one. The spike is down, but he is letting them know that his presence is certainly going to be felt here and that is going to be the round a big one for tsm latyrus 
everybody. You gotta give it to TSM for their patience as well, because definitely some efforts being made by the Omen, throwing out the utility to try and pay as much attention to the B site as possible. But Wardell, so competent in being able to anchor a site in his lonesome, and as soon as he got that oh intel God. from the Cypher ultimate, then easy cleanup as far as he makes it seems. And he'll let them plant there in that instance, right? There's no reason for him to expose himself. They they already showed their hand. He knows exactly where they're going to be. You never want to full commit on a rotation there. While it did certainly seem like that, they made a ton of noise. You got to leave that one player on that site. And that is exactly why TSM are up 10 to 7 here. Let's see, though, how they're going to be able to work around on this one. Round number 18 been a great matchup for game one in the grand finals on ascent which uh, you know you and i were talking before we went live i didn't expect that we were going to see ascent and yet here we are 2020 what a year i really didn't especially when you consider that cloud nine has gained a lot of their victories off of the shoulders of tense performance i'm not completely sure about their semifinals, but i know throughout the quarters there wasn't a single game they won where he wasn't top frag in the round which it's great and all as far as his performance, but for the team itself, says something about where they rely for the power. So interesting to see them playing out here on Ascent in an effective manner so far. Yeah, on, on Sage. And I was uh, talking to, to Bren earlier. I'm, I heard, hate to give him two shout outs when one broadcast, <laughs> uh, but I was talking to him earlier. Oof up with the bulldog uh that you know i felt like sage players were kind of going to get the uh you know the the crappy end of the bargain because a lot of players are just going to be left there you know maybe bottom fragging because they, they have to try and stay alive and then you have tens who is arguably the the top fragger for this team picking up this very critical support agent wardell doing his best to stay alive there but it's tens on top of the platform look at this with the wall this is how you get clever oh Oh no, but Drone is just a little bit smarter there with his aim. I mean, Lael's the shot. It's going to prompt Cloud9 to have to move around this, but Cutler cannot stay alive. Neither can Sub Rosa. And that, even though time was ticking down, is going to be a round win for Cloud9. My, oh my, eight to 10 on the scoreboard currently as Cloud9 keep themselves here in game number one. We'll take a look at this again as Mitch oh, is what able a to effectively clear through that doorway. And that really sets up the rest of the team. You do not anticipate that player coming from defense all that often. He was holding the angle looking at B main given where they were pushing from and then he just wraps around the side there, but... All right, moving on, though, here to our uh, potential opportunity for Cloud9 oh, to bring us within one. Let's see Keeping to the same a... yep. dark cover before, but a faster rotation from Omen to join the rest is Relics has joined them as they try to push through mid. Low drone going through, spotted by Cypher directly on the site. Is this going to be easy to move in? Oh, Sabrosa, he was in wine just waiting for him. Shinobi tried to just direct that spray on the other side, but it didn't work out that well. They do manage, though, to get onto the site. So before a Drone can even do anything with this, he's going to have to remove this wall there. And then Wardell, Wardell gets two with the Hunter's Fury. There's a player on the other side of the wall there. I think he's going to be inside of the dark cover. It's tens inside of it. Peekaboo, but it's Drone who saw you. And that will be another round for TSM. But I like the, you know, the, the, the moxie, if I use a word from the 1950s, uh, on tens to be inside of that dark cover there. That actually took a lot of guts. In general, there was some surprise positioning that played a role during that round. For instance, Wine, not always going to find someone there because of its limited view in terms of where the push is coming from, unless you have that intel knowing you're trying to catch them. So being able to pop directly onto the side of the Brimstone left an opening, but nonetheless, it was back and forth battle between them. And run it back right here to kick things off, mostly for information gathering as Drone tends to enjoy using it for. Yeah, the run it back and the way that drone uses it if you find value with the kill awesome but if you get information that is that is just as important there especially when executing from the position he was there's so much that you can gather just looking over mid whether it be the direct entry points into the sites the fact that there's an absence there then you know there's more likely to be a commit one way or another yep 
And that just shots galore to try and throw some sights off, but that's a pop into the head of the Un, so unfortunately. Down one on the side of the attackers, but not nearly as detrimental if you find that cell in your in that same position as the defense. I didn't talk about this, but we also have, if I'm correct, we got ourselves a little cheeky Aries in play. Always oh. a fan of that. <laughs> Love me some Aries. Perhaps with some structures to break through the way that the doors work on this map as well. Now, Cutler, I think he's aware that he's got some company here. <laughs> oh. Did that flash end up going on to Shinobi? It did. It, it caught Shinobi, but it didn't get Cutler, but Shinobi still gets the kill. Maybe he really is a ninja. We have to talk to Bob about that. Anyway, looking forward, though. Only a few seconds remaining, and there's Mitch. He's got to just take this spike and put it down as soon as he possibly can. It is going to be a 1v1, a Sova mirror match. Oh, sorry, stand corrected. 1v2, but the Sova's still going to be left alive. Wardell gets the kill. It doesn't matter. It came down to the mirror, but whatever. Wardell wins it. He's got 26 kills. The Tigress, it, he is just, he's fragging out. The time that it took for Mitch, of course, he had to plant it. He was in a tough position, but not enough intel for him to know exactly where he should have been looking for the peak, especially with two defenders ready to collapse upon him from both sides. But nonetheless, this puts it within game point for TSM, 12 to 8 currently on the scoreboard, but not enough funds available to get all the purchasing that they want to. Luckily, because they have the lead in rounds, then they're not going to be sweating that too much. Cloud9, on the other hand, have to use everything in their arsenal Arsenal currently to put them ahead and four ultimates can't help you do that they are gonna have to play this rolling thunder out early frag though that first blood will be so critical in this instance and sub rose is just taking presence in mid right away he doesn't he doesn't care he's just They're going for reckless it. Reckless pushing forward. I mean, you see that there's a cypher and a broom oh, neck to neck geez. directly through that mid connector. And Sub Rose is the first one to get the pink on to Vice. So luckily, Cutler is able to get some follow up as well. Now, four still standing for TSM on the defense. They're scrambling towards the A site, but not enough information to know if this is a full commit over to A. Cloud9, on the other hand, a bit low on numbers in terms of attackers. They are outnumbered by the defense. So choosing to play this slow, being that they still have about 50 seconds to work with. So it appeared as if we were going to see this full commit on A, but the Sova drone actually slowed it down, forced the bomb to make its way over to T side and then wrap mid. They're still looking to play this A, but Wardell stuffed out mitch not allowing and color actually just tossed his uh webcam over and try to give him you know maybe a christmas present a little early on fortunately it's not how this game works now wardell can be playing low doesn't find a shot there make sure you quote whenever wardell misses but it won't matter because his teammates certainly don't and that is going to be tsm getting the first game here in the grand finals and the tigers this was certainly uh, a, a very unique game because we saw tens in a roll that I, I certainly didn't expect him to play in with Sage. You, typically, we see him play like the Rays or maybe something a little bit more aggressive. But now, uh, man, I realize I'm also really further ahead on this camera. Let me actually zoom back a little bit. Anyway, <laughs> you're, you're I, look, I want you guys. I, I mean, I, I have a bald head. I mean, there's not much I can really do about it. Anyway, uh, but yeah, man, that was a, that was a great game across the board. Yeah, the way that we've seen tens with the operator and a lot of those that are starting to form their identity around that op play is choosing those aggressive agents that complement it, allow you to get that off positioning. And that is what ends up getting them in a point where they can get those closer engages with it as well. But the passive agent worked effectively for him in this case, but that was only game number one. Isn't that right, Golden Boy? That's right. I, I do wonder where we're going to be going to next uh, because. There is certainly going to be a a lot of questions that we need answered. Like, what what is going to be Tenz's role going into these next games? Is he going to try and play that Sage a little bit more, or are we going to see you know maybe like I I, I believe it's uh, Relics who, who or Skylar who usually picks it up uh, for their team. Like, what are they going to do composition wise? Uh, we saw some Sageless compositions. Is that going to happen, or is that just like a one time thing? Uh, and at this point, TSM they're now sitting at tournament point. Very close to winning this whole thing and continuing to cement, by the way, Latigra said that they are one of the best teams in North America. 
if if it keeps going like this. The only team that probably can make that case and more than likely will make that case is T1, who aren't participating in this tournament. You have TSM showing a lot of strength with the veterans on their team. You have Hayes, you have Cutler, and then all these fraggers around them that can really pull through on the leaderboard. But that being said, that was game number one. Soon enough, we are going to hop into game number two between TSM and Cloud9. So stay tuned. Standing here from MIC Valorant. Today I'll be looking at how to play Cypher on Ascent. Cypher's first ability is Tripwire, and mostly on attack, this is used as defensive like flank trips. And that's good, but you also can get use out of Cypher's Tripwires on attack is if you use them for post plant. And this is a good one you can use for Heaven. If you place that right here, it goes across the line. And you can sit under Valk and get a free spam kill when they're retaking. So a good thing for Cypher on defense on Ascent is if you place the Tripwire outside the doorway, they cannot spam the door. They pick the trip. And they have to get really close up to it to even get a chance of spamming it. But at that point, you're already exposed to every single angle. Another cool interaction of tripwires on defense is if a shock arrow lands on your trip, yeah. mid animation while the shock arrow is exploding, you can pick up your trip and it will show the animation of the tripwire breaking, but you will still get your trip back. Using Cypher's camera on attack is usually just an info gather tool. So if I want to spot mid and see if they're pushing, I can do that. Or I can bring it to A and see if they're pushing A. Or if I really want to get a lot more info out, if I want to walk out of sight or we're clearing it together, I can put a camera here and see almost all of sight. And if they break it, they still show on the mini map and I can spot them that way. On defense, Cypher's camera can be either used really aggressively where you get info on A, say, and I get all of the info on A and I can instantly rotate out or push up. Or you can use it a little bit more defensively and I could put one maybe here. And if I spot someone, they right here, they're pretty much committed to taking A, and I can know that and call rotate over that way. There's also a lot of use out of saving your camera, placing it early, and never looking at it so it's hidden so they can't spam it, and say 30 seconds left in the round. If I check the camera and they're all grouping up A, we know it's A, and we get that little bit more time to rotate. The next ability is Cypher's Cages. And they don't have too much use on attack because of the limited range. But something I usually do is usually just save them for post plant and use them to stop the retake a little bit longer. Cage trigger. Defensive cages are also pretty standard. Uh, you mostly just want to think about activating cage the cage before they go over the trip. So it's harder for them to break the trip and you'll be able to spot them and spam the smoke. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any other questions, you can reach me at JC Stanny on Twitter. If you guys could duo with anybody in history, anybody that has ever existed and that does exist, who would you duo with? Who do you think would be fun? Who do you think would be good at video games, maybe? I think I would choose Michael Jordan. Just because I feel like, you know, yeah, everyone talks about his competitiveness and like how crazy he used to be and like it would be pretty cool to see that in a video game and like next to him, you know. And, yeah, like, Michael Jordan's the next simple. Exactly, yeah. maybe he is and like I just wanna see his like competitive side. Yeah, we'll Up probably close. play with uh, Albert Einstein probably. Uh just to uh, learn while I play a <laughs> lot. I feel just you can bring it up you already knowledge. play with him. His name is Staniel. Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Big brain. But yeah, I feel I could learn out of, out of this guy. And uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think I'd choose like a comedian like Theo Vaughn or something like that, just because I'm trying to have fun when I'm playing. But yeah, I'd choose somebody like that because I'm just trying to like have some content for the stream. Of course. And just have for a the good stream. time. It's all about the yeah. content. Einstein yeah. bring content too. <laughs> <laughs> True.
Welcome back, everyone, to Immortals First Light, powered by GameStop. I'm Golden Boy. I fixed my camera so you didn't see so much of my glorious, oily brown skin. Uh, what I'm if joined... I wanted that, Golden Boy? Did you ask me I'm... first? How I'm dare so you? Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I just figured the shine would just be a little bit too much. But you're getting a little bit of my uh, of my Brooklyn apartment, so that's nice. Uh, yeah, and I really wanted you guys to see my Master Chief helmet, honestly. Like, that's really... Because wherever I go, Halo's right there with me. Uh, so, guys... We are now at tournament point here for TSM as they're up one to zero in this competition, in this grand final versus Cloud9. And Cloud9, LaTigra showed us some different looks in game one. We had tens on the Sage. And I think overall, I think this Cloud9 team is starting to become like even more disciplined than what they were before. They were giving TSM a run for their money. Yeah, looking back at some of the comps that Cloud9 has brought to the table earlier on during the quarterfinal we watched on the broadcast, they're running Raze, Brim, Breach, Omen, and Cypher, which is obviously very different than what you're used to. The It was till recently, I think Sage was, what, 100% pick rate or something like yeah. that, these competitive yeah. invitationals. But the difference in play style that it brings you as well, if you're not relying upon the comfort of having a heel behind you and you have instead more aggressive utility, then I would love to see them bring something like that and then respond accordingly with the way they play it, trying to get into sites a bit quicker and potentially stike or cycle rather maybe some of the grenades or the more damaging utility they have available. And yeah. it's just a whole different approach that shows we're in the early stages of Valorant and what is considered meta. Exactly. At the beginning of the closed beta, there was just the, the cornerstones, right? Brim, Breach, Sage, and Cypher. Those were the the agents oh boy, that you saw in every, in every comp. comp you're, you're a Breach main? You're a Breach main? That actually works uh, really well. He's my bro. He's my everything. So, so you play. Yeah. Okay, excellent. I'm a Brimstone main. <laughs> this works gorgeously. Go Let's do this. Uh, but yeah, like, and, and here's the thing. That composition is still really strong. There's no doubt about it. It's still a very strong comp. But I think that with the addition of Rays as well as Reyna, it brought a lot of flavor to what you can do with a lot of your compositions and whether or not you want to, and also the changes to Omen as well. I think, you know, you can make the case that Omen has now entered into that conversation of like, you know, I think 50%, maybe 60%, you're going to see Omen in, in comps now because the changes that they made to him are just so significant and so awesome that it leveled up that agent to areas that we didn't think was even possible. It almost allows you to approach some of his utility in a more traditional sense, because if you look at his smokes, for instance, and the way they operated before, they're already unique in the way it creates almost like a fighting dome inside because they are hollow and they had a different type of execution and things like his TP that's a little different or yeah. being able to get that nearsighted. It, all, it was kind of got people in this place of, do I need to be an edgelord to play Omen? And then now it's more like, okay, I can position these smokes effectively in a traditional yeah. way. I can consider this as a blind in some ways and just try and displace them if need be. I don't always have to catch someone out. And he still has that edgelord component, don't you worry, if that's why <laughs> yes. you like picking him up before. But I think not feeling like you have to force yourself into a specific Omen style and always ulting into heaven every single time you know <laughs> or always going for a trick tp play on bind you know like i whatever. always gotta get on top of that sage wall always got I gotta be. <laughs> no not anymore uh, <laughs> no, you, you're right it's it's no longer a trick i mean I, i'm you know i know we're talking about maybe broader game stuff here but uh, i and i don't know if we have any viper mains in the chat we probably do uh, so I want you to know that I, I, I feel your pain, even though I don't play Viper. I'm really sorry for you guys. Hopefully Viper gets a little bit more play uh, moving forward. Although, although yesterday we did see some play Viper on split, which uh, Viper on split has always been like uh, whether or not you're comfortable with the agent, you can run it on split or not. If you uh, see her anywhere, you see her on split. Exactly. Sometimes I've seen on bind, but on split, it's been here and there. Speaking of map, so let's find out where we're going to be going because it is now time for game number two. TSM is up 1-0 here in our grand finals, and it is bind where we're taking a trip to. And looking at the compositions you got on TSM side, they're going to be running with basically what we would expect them. You have a Haze on Sage, Drone on Phoenix, Wardell is going to be playing Sova, Sub Rosa on Brim, and Cutler on Cypher. On the other side of that, 
The exciting part of this is that Tens is going to be playing Jet, Mitch on Brim, Shinobi on Sage, Relics playing the... It, it, actually, some change-ups here. Vice committing to the same one. I think Mitch was playing the Sova last time, so... Uh, I wonder what this comp is going to bring to the table here, but I like the, the jet pick. I, I do like the jet pick. I do. Jet just naturally with her kit has a lot of agency in the way that she approaches the duels. Being that any of the duelists, you're looking for 1v1 situations or trying to get an opening frag to allow the rest of your team to aggress through. But having Jet paired with Phoenix, sometimes doubling down on that can be very effective for you. Both of them positioned directly here in A short to try and find something, but Rosa. Always going to use that brim smoke here on the pistol round to try and block off and delay some of the pushing from the attacker side. And another note, too, what Sabrosa picked up, I think, was just one, one uh, uh, smoke, maybe two smokes, and the molly. But Tens is actually going to drift right past that. But Wardell does manage to meet him with the shot. Relics comes around the corner, and there's Relics managing to just hold Wardell back. Sabrosa is going to be inside of Lamps. A few kills went out. You're going to have one inside of Heaven, two inside of Heaven, as a matter of fact. It's going to be Haze along with Drone. But the box is there on the site. Yeah, that's yep. a great place to hide to try and block off those sight lines. And Sabrosa oh. ends up rotating through the yule. But that's the TP going over to B site. You drew all the attention of the defenders to A, which leaves this completely open, getting that plant over into two. And still, Relics is here to just defer some of that attention even further. Yeah. It really puts them in a real sticky situation now i i love the quick tp play fun to do in round ones fun to do in comp but also in unrated if you ever want to try that out you just pull a lot of that attention you know you don't have to worry about anyone trying to flank around you so you you've already gotten all these players on site but here we go an attempt to defuse here just trying to bait someone out drone nails that shot looking for another one and drone but it's sub rosa who actually finds a headshot one more going to be located right by elbow and it's sub rosa and they needed to get rid of him. And time and time again, Rosa manages to come out clutch for this team. And TSM, take the pistol. You gotta dig it. You gotta dig it. I mean, we talk so much about what Wardell can do. And then obviously Cutler and Hayes being the veterans of the team. Hayes being a team leader in this case. But Drone and Sub Rosa also have that really great pop-off chance. Sub Rosa leading the top of the lobbies in many of the games here today. Very consistent brimstone player here. Take Sub Rosa in general is just consistent i i don't like when he's having a bad day you know that tsm's in trouble he really embodies i i think the rock of this team because his his smokes are clutch his angles with mollies are clutch and every single time you see sub rosa he's getting some insane value so when you when you pick him early it really hurts this team a lot of people say that it's wardell but i do genuinely believe that sub rosa is that player that really hurts when they lose him but wardell his effectiveness cannot be questioned when he has a sniper rifle in his hands and i thought that shot was a kill because drone got one immediately on skylar uh but now this is going to prompt this rotation oh. gabby over and they're going to run right into sub Yep, sub is here. He is waiting. Does he get one pop? There's the next Look one. At that. Oh, flawless run. Sub Rosa with the ghost. Sometimes that's all you need, baby. Cloud9 Look wasn't even that. expecting to get that, but damn. That's what I'm saying. He is disgusting. Comes around the corner. I mean, sure, the Brimstone was taking a look at his iPad. But even then, you would imagine that Shinobi would have been able to line up that shot. And, and Shinobi was unaware. I mean, that was a very aggressive angle that Sub Rosa was holding. But again, he puts himself in positions like that that allow his team to win rounds consistently. TSM up now 2-0, to zero, folks. Real guns are going to be purchased this time around. I also appreciate the fact that in that last one, so Rosa stayed committed to the pistol and now manages to get this phantom. So we'll be able to match toe to toe here against his team. Cutler, though, is going to fall victim in the first blood to tens via headshot. With one defender down, they weren't exactly positioned a way to fully capitalize to push into the site. That's all they were hoping for. No reason to rush this if you're attacker. Oh, that's going to be a clear off of another defender, though. See, sometimes all you want to get is pick after pick to get yourself here. All of the attackers except for one are located over onto A site. 
Phoenix potentially looking to pick up anybody that rotates through, but tens right there in U-Haul says, hello, I'm here to play and I'm going to make a statement. Yeah, tens versus Wardell in that instance and Wardell had that angle locked, but they did not expect Drone to push around that fast. Three. It did not actually uh, burst the, uh, the, the slow orb in time. And then <laughs> Skyler with a low snap, a curveball there and tried to catch Hayes off guard. And Hayes is going to be the only person left alive here, Gabs. And it looks like this is going to be Cloud9 walking away with this one. So I, I got to give a shout out. That's a great thing to do. You can create an effective pop flash by throwing your curveball through the blaze, but unfortunately unable to catch up in that moment. Hayes just wants to hold on to his rifle here. He's got the vandal and he doesn't want anyone taking it away from him. Yeah, they're going to need to hold on to that weapon. His teammates, uh, money wise, they should be okay. Because some of them didn't buy in that last one. Wardell was holding on to that Marshall uh, for quite some time. Also on that light armor too. So we'll be able to get up. And he's going to be in a position already that is beneficial for his team. With the weapon of his choice. The lead opper for this TSM roster. Full guns across the board though. Got some ultimates online. Some Rosa will have orbital strike. Drone will have run it back. Same thing on the other side, as a matter of fact. It's going to be a mirror on both ends. Which I'm sure means that we can expect an information gathering running back within these next few rounds at some point from Drone. As we mentioned during the last map, that's how he likes to effectively use this. It's two positioned over onto B site for the defenders. Two on A. The op's going to be in exactly where you expect to be, sitting over an A window, but it's just Cypher there to bait if needed. Meanwhile, the rest of the attackers have the double split, two over onto Hookah side. Slow orb thrown into Garden, a bit of information gathering, trying to slow a potential push through that long portion. Tense takes a little bit of damage through Hookah, but that gives the information that Phoenix is lying in wait around this corner. Yeah, Drone was holding that Molly for a very long time and was just peeking and peeking and peeking. And I thought that Tens might have been able to get the better of him, but he had to clear his corner. And that actually allowed Drone that time to uh, drop that. And then Drone actually charges right through the portal just to get some more information. Saw where that Cypher was located. Tens flies out. He's going to be on top of the box there. Gets a headshot onto Hayes. Looking for another one. But around the corner, it's Drone who got himself two relics. Also was going to contribute to that one with a kill on Cutler at that moment in time. This is going to prompt them for that full rotation onto the other side. They're going to make their way over to A, thus sending Wardell, who still has an op, over to Heaven. So Rosa on the flank, but the numbers advantage will be for Cloud9. Taking over into the connector angle, a little less forecasted than the window, which is what the attackers will be expecting. Wardell loves to take these close angles with the op and is no stranger to getting that shot right into the body to clear one. As Brimstone makes his way through showers. Sage and Phoenix are holding directly here too, so they have to be worried about that. They didn't see him. They didn't see him. So Rosa managed to creep around him. He's going to be able to pick one. And then this is going to leave the Phoenix all the way tucked in the corner. There's Sub Rosa again. The spray down just to let him know. And that will be another round win for TSM off the back of Sub Rosa getting himself a double kill. But that timing there, Gabby. I mean, if they, if, if, if they had just stayed there, if Shinomi had just stayed looking for just a second longer, would have actually seen Sub Rosa on the flank. I was just thinking that Sabrosa was coming through, and right before that, Shinobi had kept his eyes over towards the teleporter entrance way for quite some time, but clearly wanted to revert his attention to make sure that Relics was all fine and dandy, but they didn't stay all fine and dandy after that. Meanwhile, as far as what they've got in the bank, looking a little slim on the side of Cloud9. That's right. 3-1 in the favor of TSM2. They could be able to roll this into some multiple victories to have a strong finish for their defensive side if they can keep up this momentum. Looking like a ramen night here for Cloud9. Hey, they you know, be able, I'm never going to gonna complain about ramen. Little instant ramen, you know? I'm talking about like cup noodle. Yeah, no, I ate so like much of ramen. that. I ate so much in college that I couldn't eat it for about a year. Cup I noodles my jam. Back when, I, <laughs> when I was poor, we used to, I know this is like really weird to say on a broadcast, uh, but when I was poor, uh, I actually used to do the, the meal, the play was cup noodles and uh, and like lettuce. Yeah. Dope. Yeah. You can find it. 
These are the real cool. tips that you came here for. That's right. The budget meals to get you fragging like tents. You guys think you're here for my below average commentary. No, instead, I'm actually going to give you some college tips if you poke. Yeah. You don't even need to boil water. That's what microwaves are for. Who needs that? <laughs> Ain't that the truth? All right, well, flash around the corner, but just oh. like that, Wardell actually stuffs relics and sends him back from whence he came. So Rosa at that same time did get a kill. And as Vice pushed onto site, Hayes met him right on the opposite side there, right, uh, right underneath Heaven, leaving just Shinobi. All by his lonesome. And he can't ninja dash his way out of this one. And that is going to be uh, a very clean win there for TSM. That was an eco round, don't get me wrong. So them getting the, the, the spike down at the very least was beneficial. They got yep. some cash for it. They even used the majority of their utility to get in that position to get the plant down, knowing very well that if they lost too many players on that entry, it would be difficult to hold after. So... Hey, you take the wins as you get them. 4-1 isn't too terrible. And at this point, you do get your rifles in hand. So a lot stronger lineup to be facing against TSM. All right. Now we may have a uh, B hit here. So two going up toward long. Tens continuing to work right by Hookah as he's been doing uh, quite a few times. But this, this is the trust that TSM have in Wardell that they'll just send him to hold A by himself because he has op looking long. And he's good. You know, he's all right. Oh, you ain't coming back. Oh, I that. also like the delayed rotation of Rosa has been holding into the back and that's going to actually call for him to push forward because this is a very clear push into B from the attacker side. Coming through Garden, Spike's made his way through Sight. And there's some more funneling through Hookah as well. Cutler, it's too difficult to try and hold on to both of these angles to throw down the trap for some kind of safety as the orbital strike starts to block off a whole entire part of this site. Oh! Molly. Good shot there from Sabrosa. The Molly's out. Spike is going to be down too. But actually, Skylar pops up behind him. And then manages to nabs him with a with a headshot there. Now that is going to be spiked down. Only Wardell in a one v three. If he gets a pick, but nope, that is not going to work out for them, and they're going to give up that op in the round, and that will be four two. So Cloud Nine showing some life here, which is exactly what we want out of this team. And although they have lost some cash and they are still going to be a little strapped there so so is tsm a little bit you know drone and sub rosa they're, they're going to be a little worse for wear there yeah and also following up on that they cloud nine went into that round with only the resurrection from the sage available they have built themselves up oh. towards right back double op Ooh, I missed who was running the double op. Which side? Sub Rosa. Sub Rosa's running double op oh. as well as uh, uh, Wardell. So. Okay. And Sub Rosa is typically the secondary opera when they choose to go this way. You'll always see him more likely on the defensive side compared to the offensive. And with that, even some aggressive positioning on the defensive too. They've sent Sova directly into Hookah to. Uh, supplement what tsm has going on there drone was previously holding it all in his isolation but the b presence previously called for more attention unbeknownst to them though cloud nine's making their way towards a drone gets a pick from jet tense tried to get an aggressive pick there but unfortunately met his own demise and then while all that was going on, Sabrosa picked up two kills on a site with that op, which he certainly was not expecting at that point in time. And just to kind of reflect on what ended up happening there with that play, Tens did not expect them to be uh, two players focused on hookah because as soon as he just tried to just do that little jump peek to pull out whatever information he can, found out that it was going to be the op player there. He then jumped right back in, obviously not knowing that you were going to see drone. So there was just a lot that worked out for TSM. And that is going to leave Cloud9. And, and most importantly, that is going to leave Shinobi in a tough spot here with Spike. No time and needs to hold on to this weapon. The defenders have spread themselves here trying to find him as well. They're on the hunt. They are, they are in all the opposite directions of where he is, but 
that's going to be a victory over to TSM. And speaking about, you're just talking about that hookah moment. You can't blame Tens for trying to make that play. When it comes to Valorant, there's always going to be some level of risk in every moment you take. And the delay can be more detrimental than getting killed often in trying to make those plays. He was operating off of the information from the previous rounds as, uh, the previous rounds, as he has been constantly trying to push through hookah and had only found drone in all of those situations. So just that slight change change on defense, adding a single secondary member into Yuka allowed for a turning of the tide for them on that site. It's something that TSM really enjoy doing. They would mix it up, send Wardell in different areas. Even right now, Wardell's going for that long peak on B-Long, and, and Sabros is still going to be holding on to this snipe. He's taking a more traditional angle than what we can expect players to do here. And actually, Sabrosa is going to be tagged up quite a bit, dinged up, and he, in a lot of pain. There goes an orbital strike, actually, to just try and hold this one off. So Broza tucked away in the back, needs his teammates to get there to help him out as fast as possible. And Sabrosa also watching the flank here, too. So this is going to prompt that rotation. Have to come out there. And Sabrosa, with just barely any HP, was able to stay alive. And now getting that healing there, courtesy of their Sage. Sabrosa again manages to find his mark, this time against the mirror. Mitch, the rival Brimstone. There goes oh. another orbital strike. Sabrosa with three. And this so far has just been the Sabrosa show. And Shinobi once again left. All oh, buys lonesome. But this time he can at least try to go for the plant. The problem is with this rotation path he has taken on the side of TSM. You have Hayes is going to be coming right over here through the defender halls. Those B halls can be a dangerous place. Shinobi, very aware of the rotation speed, doesn't end up rushing into the site and giving away his positioning, but he'll be coming right into the enemy stage in just a moment's time, using the wall to block off one area, which leaves Elbow as the only place for Haze to rotate. The collapse slowly entrenching. Yeah. It's like it's like Jaws. Dun 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 dun. Oh, gets one though. Does he actually kill Jaws? No, Jaws kills him. And that is Hayes finding the mark that he was initially locating. And that will give them an op. I think they're just gonna give that one to Wardell so he can get closer to Hunter's Fury, maybe? Or or not. They gotta they gotta defuse that. Um they <laughs> were a little okay. iffy on what they wanted to do there, but all right. I was, I was like, I was like oh. Yeah, yeah, you know, okay, you're gonna drop that for Wardell. Oh no, Wardell's looking for a sniper. Oh, okay, tight. That's what's up. That, that's really <laughs> what happened. Yeah, usually, typically for, I mean, as most people watching this have played Valorant, you do want to give that over to somebody who's still working towards their ultimate, but hey, finding an op is also effective. As now, TSM still gonna get to work with that double op setup. So, Bruce and Wardell, very effective in. Wardell, as you mentioned before, the capability for him to be at any point on the map for any moment in time is one of the biggest strengths of this roster. Look at this. So a run it back sent right through. I think they may have read that one, but they don't know that Wardell is going to be there. Now they do. Now they're aware. Wardell misses two, two shots there, which is very uncharacteristic, but gets one through the flash. Barely and enough alive. Time. Great response time for him to do that. Ten goes back. Holding an Uka gets the nice shot onto Sabrosa. Sabrosa is not the only one that was there to try and rotate in on this. Another one from Ten. He's looking for it, looking for it. Be careful because Tens is actually on the hunt. Only has a classic, by the way. Three. But it's all he's going to need. I'm Gets the op. Lots of time left. But finally, his reign of terror has come to a conclusion. Oh, a lot. He's just got to hope that his teammate can clean it up. He said, I did so much work. Do you got this, my friend? <laughs> you got to win it. You, you got to win it. But no, it's Color Cutler. Wow. That was a, a master class in jet play from Tens. The way that he navigated... All of that tricky terrain there. It started with that kill on Sabrosa and then was debating the jump out, was trying to just get anything on that player hiding in corner and then sent a few knives over in that direction. While that was going on, still managed to get a kill with the classic on the Wardell inside of the smoke while Wardell was just all, you know, fuzzed up from that. 
from that smoke, not knowing his left, right, or center in that instance. The last thing you expect is a laser beam classic shooting at you in the face in that moment in time. Same flashes that we saw before, but a different result. Drone taking out the enemy stage. Relic did a great job before you can get through the TP. He says, nah, you go bye bye by my command. That was another just like this whole cat and mouse game that's going on now. Also, expectingly or unexpected, I should say, excuse me, was that Wardell's been playing that B long a lot and he likes moving around the map. I think the reason why he hasn't, or I think I thought he hasn't, is because uh, they were taking that secondary op over to the A site. That said, now that he's been playing that a lot, I think he might try and change up what he does in the next round. And, and, and kudos really uh, to, to the Phoenix for, for just really exploiting that, you know, and, and, and really abusing whatever it was that they were trying to cook up there at the uh, B long side. But now it looks like a short A push and players it's have actually rotated. Yeah, defense has no idea. It's a, okay, I mean, they have the trip, the trap wires here, so that's going to give them the information as soon as possible, but you still have to rotate on through. Yeah. Oh, man, that actually is hilarious. They abandoned that site, but it just goes to show you how strong Cypher is. Now, they're going to have to retake this positioning. Spike is finally down. Right in front of Truck. There's the resurrection. Huh? Trying to give them a little bit of a, not a numbers advantage per se, because you're still going to have a few players still left alive. Relics does get a kill on Hayes. Checking the common default spot inside of the box. Don't blame them for that one. Mitch and Vice are going to be holding inside of Lamps. You're going to have 10s up ahead as well. Wardell manages to find a shot, but it's Mitch, though, actually tags himself too. And Mary Poppins flying in the sky gets Wardell as he was coming out of the showers. Oh, man. What a play there. I love to see a good float, you know, a good floater. You know, it's a, always a, always nice to see mind doing stuff with my hands too, like a little floater, you know. You know, I know that there's all this Mary Poppins talk with it, but I like to think of her as Princess Peach. Okay, Princess I, Peach. I'm, you know, I'm an advocate for the Peach way in the description okay. of Jet. Putting that so out so there. So you're, you're a Peach main in Smash then as well? Not actually. I love my boy Bowser, but you know, okay. don't have that. But still, I gotta, I, I gotta say, vibe for Peach sometimes. You know, crazy Peach mains over here, you know, running <laughs> all these tournaments. Mm hmm. You know, I just gotta, I just gotta. But Cloud Nine's just gotta get some rounds for themselves. Because as a reminder, everybody, this is the grand finals. TSM are currently up one game in this best of three series, seven to three on this map in particular. Moments away from grabbing. Potentially a hold of Kuka if they decide to push in here. Two players once again on the defense trying to hold this on the inside and outside of that Kuka window, but different than what they had prior. Wardell in the back of site. A nice go in to try and get the kill onto Drone. Unfortunately, Tins was taken out on the way out. Yeah, and Tens actually still is alive, but yeah, it is it, it is Mitch that will Feeling fall, and, and that hurts because without that Brim ult the tigress it, it you know you you would like to think that they could have uh utilized that to be able to bring themselves Jump back into this one maybe force some players out of positioning especially considering play. yeah these holes that you've seen over on you hall yep it's a great way to try and affect that in some ways brim it's the most punishing when he goes down because the information and agency oh. gives the opponent to pull in but that's the shots attempting to go right through the cage and I actually thought that would have worked out. They got to get that spike down, Gabby. They don't have a lot of time. Tens gets the shot, but the Hunter's Fury is in play. No choices. No choices. Can he get the shot off? Does do the damage. And that is going to be the round. No one was there to get that spike down because he shot him through the wall with a freaking laser beam. Oh. That big old laser. I don't even think of it as a... Well, I guess there's so many laser beams, right? You got the Hunter Fury. That's like all of those. The... Orbital strike is technically a giant laser beam oh, coming. Not from technically, the sky. it is a laser beam. It's a giant laser beam. I just sky. can't think of it as a laser because when I think laser beam, I think tiny pew pew, not <laughs> big entire area of effect. It, it, if Doctor Evil's taught me anything, it's that laser beams can come in any shape, form, or size, even on a, a, a shark. Okay, so that's no. true. We had Jaws earlier. No laser beam for that one. 
No laser beam for that shark. No, but okay. Well, look, Wardell's timing on that. The, the timing on the flash, you have to anticipate that. And Wardell has been in that predicament so many times that it almost seems like it's boiled down to a science. Tenzo does manage to take advantage and get onto a site. Drone playing right by L-Box. It's going to start to wait for this rotation to come through. Some smokes are going to be played. And there goes the orbital strike, forcing Drone out of position. And Shinobi lined up the headshot there, managed to just tag and remove Drone from the equation. Now they're going to get that spike down. And this is the retake opportunity here for TSM. Can they do it? Up A3, critical round here, Latagris for Cloud9. Indeed, Cloud9 have got themselves into effective post plant positioning. You have two over in U-Haul to try and keep an eye on any rotations from short, as well as hearing noises from connector. There's a potential that they hear that Cypher is pushing through and are ready to respond accordingly. Wardell, Refumble available to gather that info over into the showers. I know exactly. You saw them. Oh, you saw That's them. That forced no, them out of showers. Been... That forced them out of showers. Oh! Wardell! Oh. oh my gosh! Holy moly! So you do expect them to back <laughs> off into the back of showers off of that, but you have to have a special level of precision to they be didn't... ready for the lineup. Well, all that was going on, they didn't get the spike diffuse, obviously, but the reality <laughs> that he just got a collat with that is it, it's just dumb. It's just dumb. Uh, but that was a big round for Cloud9. They needed it. Unfortunately, everyone died, and they <laughs> would have liked to have been able to have their teammates still alive and with their weapons. Now that prompts them. Uh, well, actually, I'm sorry. That was a halftime, so I, I, I stand corrected. I'm so sorry, guys. It is 12.58 a.m., and I'm exhausted. But uh, that's halftime. That's that. I'm just going to go ahead and put that one to the side. I just can't believe what we just saw there. My word. I'm just He sent you spinning. You know, one bullet out, zipping through their heads. I guess is it three, time it yours too? Forgot what round it was. I'm just, I'm just the worst. I'm a terrible cat. Where does that effect? Ooh, crank or ball and for the word, the word Dell effect. All kinds of effects coming through. Uh, all right, so bro, so, so that was a long engaged duel between them following off on the curveball that was thrown off from the defense. But it's one defender down so far on the side of Cloud Nine. But they did have three stacked over originally into the B site. So they're still being able to hold that strong. And things are just going to slow down here is you have uh, C9. We really needed that round win in order to bring this one back up. A smart reactive wall is placed. They are going to get some intel out of this one, but just look at the hold here from Shinobi. The wall is down, plays down to slow too. Then you got Tens just jumping around. This is shades of what we saw in that first round there when Cloud9 actually did this to them. The difference is that this time around, they were going to be anticipating it, or at least you thought so. The kills are good, but it is Vice with a classic. Two players going to be working around each other right here, right by the L box. Let's see what Vice is going to do. The Molly's out there. Nice shot. Lines head shot onto Drone. Looking for another one. Does get the dink. I think did get... I right, look like he got a dink there, but it actually wasn't. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it was. He did get the dink. So it doesn't matter, though, whether he got the dink or didn't because Hayes gets two kills. And that is going to make it 9-4 TSM just a few rounds away from taking this whole thing. You gotta commend the vice for attempting to hold it down, but nonetheless, classic takes a lot of bullets to try and rain through that many heads. As far as the last map when we were on ascent, it was also an 8-4 finish after that half. That's Same right. situation that we're having here, and it got pretty close down to the wire towards the end. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see that here. The problem is TSM picking up that pistol round, then it's looking much more favorable for them to string these together and put them into double-digit territory. Ooh. And hey, hey, <laughs> wow. hey, hey, is with the ghost to open things up onto Vice. Yeah, <laughs> then tens. Ends drone inside of hookah and then some rosa answers right back secures himself to shinobi zip through the teleporter thinking that he was going to get the jump on sub rosa but the little did he know that there is no getting the jump on sub rosa sub rosa always gets the jump on you 
Relics now. Perhaps recognizing that there's going to be a player located right by Long. Does get that flash off, and it's going to be enough to kill on that one. But Relics, wisely enough. Actually, this wasn't a bad play. You'd rather just try and, and regroup and then work this together rather than uh, look to force the situation on B-site and then leave your brimstone alone here. Yeah, and on the side of TSM on this attack, if you're looking at the way they're able to set up pushing into the site, the combination of both the Cypher and the Sova for collecting as much information as possible, even though Cutler did eventually go down, his utility is what helped position them to get here in the first place and force these rotations off of Mitch as well as Relics. Oh, they're going to be able to get that round putting them really close i still can't get over that that end of the half i just <laughs> that was just i love seeing collats man it's 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 probably it's just so the fact good. that i i used to cast call of duty back in my younger years and it just makes me excited but that was so good and and also the fact that wardell goes marshall on round two like i respect that so much marshall is woefully it's underrated yeah, it's uh it's, but in the early rounds yeah you can find an effective use at a time when a lot of others are opting for closer range weapons when you're trying to bridge that gap between pistol and vandal slash phantom so yeah instead of going for something like a stinger having somebody that can just pop with that can be effective especially when facing off those that aren't fully equipped with shields because you can on the body with the chest get that one hit shot to death with it so Mitch on top of the truck here at U-Haul. And they have Owl Drone ready and smokes are about to be played out. And Hayes tossing that slow orb up top. There goes the orbital strike. And Mitch, though, even with the best effort of the coordination there, was able to get two kills. He stayed in that position as long as he possibly could before having to move for the orbital strike. And they knew that he was there as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, these attackers are falling on the side of TSM. This is shaping up to be a potential Cloud9 round win here, but never say never. Very he gets boxed out. Yeah, he gets boxed out. Cutler's down. That just leaves Hayes all by himself here. And finally, Cloud9. They get themselves around here in this half. The first one. As you mentioned earlier, on Ascent, they ended out 8-4. This time around, doing the same thing on the half, 8-4. Will history repeat itself? It's certainly going to be the question here. TSM are hungry. One of the most anticipated teams coming into this Invitational due to past performances. They're able to pick up a win recently, some runner-up finishes. And looking to be one of the more formed together teams when it comes to having player leadership, those that you can rely on for op play, for bragging out. And with that TSM, are deciding to keep him slow, but Ken starts to get an opening out here from the hookah angle, sprays through the smoke, but it is Sub Rosa that gets the double. Man, it almost seems like you just see Sub Rosa getting double after double after double. He, he does it so much. Time. All it's day, becoming, day. It's like scripted at this point, you know? The Dub Rosa. Dub Rosa. I actually quite like that. That's That's... And if he wins, then he's definitely the Dub Rosa. Hey, look at that. Hey, hey, hey there we go. But that's it, Pastor Curse right there, so, you know. Oh, never mind. Knock on wood. Your fault. I want a fair match. Although I would like a game three. I wouldn't be angry about a game three. Even though it is 1 a.m. right now, I'm not arguing oh. with that one. But Sub Rosa wants to end this one as quickly as possible. And this is going to open up four kills for Sub Rosa. Last player left alive. Does Sub Rosa become, wait for it, Ace Rosa? Hey. And get himself this final kill we're gonna be working together here alongside Hello. Wardell there's relics Looking coming around the, the mound oh it might actually be mm -hmm. Molly. oh, oh yeah. he's gonna go for Molly <laughs> incendiary lineup get him off of that oh but Wardell gets the shot you know it's Sub Rose is such a team player he doesn't care Nah. He just he just wants his teammates. Oh, by the way, that Molly was sick. I yeah. I really wanted to see what that Molly was gonna do. I 
know, not gonna lie, I was really looking forward to that. I think that's one of the greatest things about the early stages of Valorant 2 is obviously people are experimenting more and more with different lineups and there are gonna be some that are standard as far as what you're trying to execute, but the creativity that comes through is absolutely astounding. So I'm looking forward to all the highlight reels and things to come from others, but this tournament as well, 11 to five, TSM still pulling ahead here in game number two of the grand finals. Yeah, this, this actually could be a real painful round here for Cloud9. I, I saw a Bucky out, a Bulldog as well. There was one <laughs> player with an op. And now Relic's inside a garden. Are you a waiting. Bucky boy? I am a Bucky boy. I love the Bucky. It's my it's my jam. The judge can suck it. Hate the judge. Never. I always mess with that gun. <laughs> I dig the judge. No judge is here, though. No judges here. No, no, that you go for the Bucky, especially when you need to save some money. Yeah, that's true. Hunter Fury, right. he's gonna play this one instantly. Oh! Uh, these Hunter Fury lineups, it can be difficult to get consistent kills with it, but not for Wardell. He does not seem to have any problems with that agent's ultimate ability whatsoever. So Rosa does get that spike down. Tens has a lot, but not anymore. Wardell is going to just body Tens as soon as he jumped up. But the jumping shot there for the Bucky, that's the advantage with that shotgun. You do not lose accuracy when you're jumping up like a crazy person. That said, though, is the Bucky going to be enough to try and bring them back into this one? Vice will have an op as well. And actually, they're just going to dip out of this one because Shinobi picked up a gun. And it's better to save these weapons than to try and risk it for the biscuit. You're going up against four players here. But this will be tournament point for TSM as they go up 12 to 5 to close this one out. Potentially, Latigris, can they do it is the question. My, oh my, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of TSM fans out there that believe, as they should. I think one thing with having a player like Wardell in your team, obviously it's great to have somebody who has outstanding kill potential, but you notice what it opens up for them as far as positioning. He had no problem holding on the shower sites on his own in a position where you often see somebody having somebody else have to hold that angle as well just to keep them safe. So he can get those kills in safety, often multiple before he goes down if at all which just opens up so many possibilities here as tsm are so close to a potential overall victory similar hold that wardell did by bringing that uh, op over to hookah which is uh relatively common you'll see a lot of players look to do that vice with the bucky this is a desperation round here folks first blood is going to be so critical in this moment in time a lot of options online for TSM. The run it back, maybe oh Drone my. plays that to get himself some intel. Some smokes are in play. There's run it back now. And at the same time, the orbital strike answer back there. TSM looking, and Drone actually is gonna charge through it because he doesn't he doesn't need to worry about it because he's, he's in run it back state. So he's gonna be inside of lamps. And finally, he's gonna go back. So Broza, though, does manage to get the first blood. Tens gets a kill, a huge one on to Wardell. And then Vice, Vice gets a kill with the Bucky on Subrosa. This is just gonna leave only one player left alive. It's gonna be Relics. Oh, no. Can he do it? Go spike. Oh, he's Don't got the flank. spike, but you will not kill my allies. And the rest came okay. through. Oh no. He doesn't have a lot of options remaining here, folks. This is looking like it could very well be the conclusion of the Immortals' first light tournament. And there it is. TSM pick up the win. Wow. What? What a, a showing from TSM. I legitimately thought that Cloud9 were going to be able to try and bring this one back, Latigris. But it was TSM game one and game two through and through.